flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you are enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That'd be tremendous. Um, yeah, today we're starting the page of Alan Drina. I showed you him in the last episode. He's made quite the impact in our underage teams. Seven starts, but three goals and an assist from centre-back. The guy is making waves, it would be fair to say. And they reckon that we should be moving him up into the first team relatively soon, because he's actually just come in and taken to this team, like, taken to this team like a duck to water. And it does make me wonder if he might be one of the ones that breaks through, because I think the problem with a lot of the fact that we've got the likes of Sam Hughes, Nakinola, and a lot of these players in some positions is that we need to try to get them out of the way eventually to bring through players that are eventually going to just exceed them comfortably. And I think that's what's going to happen over the next couple of years. If we can stay up, bring in the right players with the young, with the youth and lots of room to grow, then we can start to build ourselves. I think the key thing for us will just to be a stable Premier League team for a bit, sort that out, bring through some talent and really let them fly. Um, and it's all about staying up this year, isn't it? The inevitable have finally happened. Starting to get Google alerts for the Notts County games. Ah, yes. Welcome to the club. Um, that happened way too quickly for me. You know you're a real fan when that's what's happening. Right. Regens. Oh yes, um, I've had a little dip over into the regen chat. If you want to participate, head over to Discord, uh, link in the description. There's a regen chat, although it keeps changing the name. I will change it back because regen, there is only one word. Sorry, new gen, my ass. First up on the chopping block, it's Ramon Killer. Um, he sounds dangerous. And the fact that he's a mercenary does not help. Then Cleophis Christopher, but he's a Vic Vincentian striker that plays for Sevilla. 38 caps for his country at 21 years old, 19 goals. But to see a Vincentian striker, that, 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 that's insane. Then Simon Berger, or Simon Berger, I guess. But to me, Simon Bergen. Then Tom Ben David Dos Santos. Just all the names. Parents just like, nope, have them all. Then Marco Dick Geiser, which, I mean, Dick Geiser. I, there's so many, so many ways that I can. Then Wang Bin. Shared without comment. Followed up with Fat John Idrisi. I just love the name Fat John. It sounds great. It sounds like a, a, a rapper from like Wakefield. And lastly, Jeng Pan Pan. We had to put him in there. The Chinese striker banging in goals. And he has a moustache. What more do you want? So, there's some regens. We'll have some more next week, hopefully. <laughs> right, so January takes a bloody long time. It really, really does. And the summer is fine, but January is the one time of the year where this game slows right down. That's because of the database setup I'm using. But my god, it literally, I can go make a cup of tea and it'll still be spinning on the same day. I wouldn't have even had to press continue. So that's a bit annoying. Bah. This is Thomas Stepanek. He's joining Notts County on the 23rd of July this year. He is joining us in the summer. 15 first touch, 15 passing, 17 acceleration, 17 agility, 17 pace. Five foot nine as well. Uh, cuts inside from both wings. Might have to look at that one. 13 crossing, 14 dribbling. Oh, this was the guy that we were competing with Manchester City for. Now, I don't think they were that interested, but they'd put a bit in it anyway because he had a release clause. So I then went a little bit over that just to see if it would work. But I think the main reason is that they probably wouldn't give him the squad status that he would have wanted. And this guy, I think, genuinely could be good. Now, he's cost us £10 million, but I honestly think that's £10 million well spent. Um, he's only 17, remember. And I think there's a lot more to come out of this lad. And he's already got incredible attributes. Um, you know, three and a half stars currently. Bear in mind, four stars is considered the Premier League quality in this team. So he's just about there and he's only 17 years old. I think he could be a world class. He wanted an £80 million release clause. I'm all right with that, to be honest. Uh, that was to clubs in like Champions League. Right, game's off camera. And then we've got two enormous games in the league today against both uh, Brighton and then Fulham. My God. So after that relatively poor performance against Brighton, I decided to go back to a more sort of general pressing approach against Palace because that seems to be what worked against Brighton. I don't know. It just seems to... I, I think what the issue was that the way that Brighton played... Uh, not Brighton. Blackburn played just did not really suit... I don't know. I don't know what it was, but we were embarrassing for most of that game and finally got ourselves back into it. But this was much more like it. Ricky Griffiths scored a goal from a free kick, of all things. I, I just... I don't understand. Ball whips in and Ricky Griffiths scores a header from a free kick, gives us the lead. Regan Booty thundered one in in the second half, which was very very nice to see. He's got more Man of the Match awards this season than you might imagine. Sam Hughes also missed a penalty in this one, so I think we were definitely good value for the victory on the night. Uh, Palace still had a couple of opportunities because, as usual, wingers are just impervious to tackles, and I cannot seem to prevent that. Uh, it's embarrassing, I've got to say sometimes, just how much better they are, even when there's no conceivable reason why, but whatever. We beat Palace 2-0, got a clean sheet, massive, massive victory. Uh, got a few clean sheets lately, a few little goals here and there, probably could have been three as well. Then we had our replay, and I knew 
knew what worked against them in the first game, so we decided to play that again. Now, this might look like it was a very even match, but when you look at the number of chances that we created in this game, particularly Curtis Jones, like he was phenomenal in this match, scored the goal from the penalty spot. We also, I think he also set up the goal for Ricky Griffiths as well. 2-1. Uh, not great in the fact that they went in front through Callum O'Dowda. So annoying. He got the ball in one of those really tight angles that we always see the shots from, and it actually went in. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, but that's just life. Thankfully, we turned it around very, very quickly with Ricky Griffiths giving us the equaliser. Curtis Jones from the penalty spot. Probably still could have had about four or five goals in this match, but we didn't. We got through. We're playing Southampton in the next round. But then we got brought back down to earth. 3-0 uh, defeat away at Manchester City. I threw caution to the wind and just tried to do something in this match, but we were already behind after 50 seconds. Um, they had nine clear-cut chances in this match because every time a winger of theirs got the ball, nothing you could do about it. Now, for City, I kind of understand, but it did seem a little bit like there was... We didn't both look like Premier League teams. It looked like what you'd expect a Premier League team to be playing a League 2 team. Uh, pops even lower, perhaps even lower than that. So there still seems to be something about the way that dribbling works at the moment. Um, you can see that I started wrong coach just to see how that would work. Now, obviously, it doesn't work when he's up against world-class defenders, but I don't know. I didn't see anything that he had the capabilities to go past anyone. So there you go. But... Regardless of that, we are on 26 points from 26 matches. We are still seven points clear of the drop zone. Um, yeah, Newcastle did beat Burnley. That was the win that got them... I mean, the fact is, if Newcastle had taken a draw against Burnley, I'd be even happier. And I would love to just get a win in today's episode against Brighton or Fulham, because that would push us to 29. And we've still got Burnley at home, remember, to come this season. I think we might just be able to do it, and I'm excited for that prospect, if nothing else. You'll also see Riga Booty, five man of the match awards this season, out of nowhere. He's just been subtly going about his work and actually doing all right. Like, when we win, he plays really well, but he can go massively missing a lot of the time. So shout out to Wolves, second in the league. Right, so, what we got? No team news. My God. The fact that Ryan Kent is missing could definitely help us. Uh, who do we want on that side? Pav, he's played all right. Maybe Brighton could be the type of game where he could actually show a bit. Then again, I want to see what Ron Coates can do against worse defenders. Because he's got 16 dribbling. And solid acceleration, decent pace. He's not even that sure. I, to me, Ron Coach should actually be able to do what other players do against us, against them. Because he's got 16 dribbling, which is very, very high. Compared to players that do this against us with 14. So we should be all right. I've also played Booty and Burton the other way round. And I found that Booty was way better like this. And Burton just, I don't know, maybe this is actually the, the, the correct order. Maybe my assistant was right all along. I realise that every episode now starts with me going, so here's what I've changed. Because that's how it's had to be. Didn't help that we were missing him for the Man City game as well. He's actually been our best player this year in terms of average rating, would you believe? So the bench is going to be Zubazareta, Silva, because he's, he seems to be able to do a job and he's not bad. Hermanson, obviously, just in case we have to switch. Curtis Jones, Stephen Walker, Pavlovich, and Gubrinic. Okay, so they've got João Pedro as an inside forward. Pascal Gross as a sad... Oh, they're actually playing a very similar system to us. So it's interesting that they've got a deep line playmaker and a Metzala. And when you see the fact that Brighton are doing it, it does make me wonder if... Oh, he could work as that. Mm, maybe not. What's the difference? Take more risks. Roam from position. I'd rather him just... Yeah, just an idea. I feel like we're on the right track with this approach, but there's definitely ways it could be improved. Oh my God, terrible mistake from Brighton. Come on, Carl. Oh my God, he's taken it too wide and yeah. And I don't understand why. Guayalo, all the way through, cleared away. And Sam Hughes has been brought down. Oh my God. We do seem to win quite a few penalties, amazingly. Sam Hughes has been fouled and he will actually be the one to take the penalty and will have had two, two clear chances inside the first five minutes and it's scored. I thought it was going to be saved. We've got the lead against Brighton. This would be massive. Morelos. Right, we've got enough players back. Oh God. Ruiz around the side and that's a poor effort on goal. Williams. Ball across. Troffin. Oh my God, it's wide. Another opportunity. Into the channel for De Hon. Oh, good back that block. Well played. Luati, great defending. Half time, Notts County 1, Brighton 0. Sam Hughes' penalty is all that separates us. They've made 15 fouls in this game so far. That's kind of really important because we're good from those situations. Brighton look a little bit more dangerous now. Ooh, saved shot from a corner. They've started to put some pressure on us now, and I don't really think we're offering anything anymore. Go on. Yes, Booty's got there. Got to play it in behind. Please, somebody play the ball in behind. They refuse to play the pass in behind ever. Oh, Troffin's in. He's offside, isn't he? Yep. No, no, he wasn't. Oh, my God. They just never play that pass in behind the back line when someone makes the run. Because Troffin does make the runs constantly. I always see him making the little indications like he's going to run, but he never gets the ball. But no! Oh! <laughs> it's Notts County 2, Brighton 0. Robbie Burton just scores his first goal, I think, in the Premier League. And I have to say, right, I've complained a lot about some of the long shots we've conceded this year. I'm calling that even based on that. What about this? This is... Um, an absolute thunderbolt from Robbie Burton. What a strike. Notts County 2, Brighton 0. Holy shit. Come on. We've done really well. Grosh. 
Oh, no. Oh, what a stop again. They just literally almost like they're passing it to the opposition half the time. Win it. Pavlovich has done well. We've got men in all kinds of spots here. Griffiths. Great stop. And really, that could have been another goal. That, if anything, that probably should have been another goal. Four clear-cut chances again for us today. Ball in, headed away. Burton needs to get this, and he does. Griffiths has got it. It's two on two, but he's got that dribbling ability. Can he go past his man? Doesn't need to. Troffin's in, and it's... He's scored! Costel Troffin makes it Notts County three, Brighton nil. He's actually scored his sixth goal of the season. And would we say that's a one-on-one, -on -one, or was it because he took it so close to the goalkeeper? I thought Griffiths was going to just go past this man, but instead he tries to find it around the side. I thought the chance had gone here. De horrific defending. Um, from Jesperson and Costel Troffin makes it 3-0. Come on! Why was our right back on the other side of the pitch? Pavlovich, can he slip it through someone? He's actually nearly found Curtis Jones. Oh god, not again! They've done it again! Costel Troffin makes it 4-0. I well, I talk about the, about the bad luck we've had this year, but honestly, some of Brighton's defending has been utterly shambolic. Remember, they gave Costel Troffin a chance in the first half, too. And Pavlov I mean, he puts an okay ball through, but again, just gives it to the goalkeeper. Troffin's in there again, and he scored himself a brace. It's 4-0 to Notts County. He taps the 69. Good God. 10 points clear of the relegation zone. Come on! And we've still got Fulham in the next match. What a performance. Okay, so penalty was fortunate. Sure. The long-range strike... They happen once in a blue moon, so fine. And they did give us two mistakes there. But the fact is, we still create some good opportunities. And that what a great win. Right, we're back. That just gets better and better. Em just brought home two boxes of Krispy Kreme donuts. I mean, I, we just beaten Brighton 4-0. And then that, I don't know what's better. It's the donuts, probably. They're missing Paddy Roberts, who is back at Fulham these days. And Cody Drama. So, so let's see. I don't... Maybe we should start Ron Coates. After all, he did start in a game that we just won. So, but then again, Pavlo. No, I think we should just give Pav another crack. But everything else, though, I'm happy. I mean, the fact is, Booty played as a Metzala, and we won the game 4 0. I'm not saying the two are linked, but I'm not saying they're not either. Um, I like this new approach as well, with Booty playing on the right hand side of it, and Burton playing in the uh, deep line playmaker role. It just seems to work for us at the moment. Everything else I'm happy to go with. Even if we don't win here, I would love a point. If we get to 30 points, that would be mwah, beautiful. Right, uh, bench. I actually think we'd probably be all right with the bench. I think I'm finally at a place tactically where I'm pretty happy with the team. And I think we're, we're still overperforming, but I've managed to get us to overperform probably at about complete maximum. I've overclocked them now. They're not just on maximum boost clock. We are running like custom voltages. Troffin. Clear the way. Uh oh. Good chance for Fulham there. Thank God for the goalkeeper, as always. Oh, <laughs> good God. We're, we're lucky not to be a goal down. Um, oh, wow. Okay. I, I didn't actually see what happened there because, as usual, it started the highlight right at the end. But we've had a chance for ourselves there. Burton's ball in. And, oh, my God, the keeper didn't come for it. A little bit of space for him. Now Troffin gets the head on it. I'm hoping those two goals, even though they were pretty much given to him, will just boost his confidence slightly. Oh, Dong strained his wrist. He's been playing with his Dong too much. Um, This is not ideal. Uh, but looks like they've got a player off the pitch at the moment as well. And I believe it's their striker of all people. So, oh, God. Walker Peters is in. And it's a good save by Polaskis. He should be able to play. I mean, if it's only his wrist, then that shouldn't really affect him playing. But I don't know if that's a risk I really want to take at this point. Bassey. Hugh. Well. <laughs> Why, why why does that have a greater chance of going in than the really good chances they've created? It just makes no sense to me. Will Hughes swivels on it and absolutely rockets one in the bottom corner. I guess we can't really complain too much given what Robbie Burton did in the last game. But it's just so weird. Like, we've got a lot of the bases covered. And it's just this sort of... Like he's side-footed at a million miles an hour. Oh, dear. Why don't they ever head the ball in that situation? That, that when the fullback got the ball there, why doesn't he head it aimlessly like ours always do? Brun Larson, good save. Really good chance there. Like that. For example, it's a decent press, actually, considering we're not really playing a high press. But it's put them under a lot of pressure. Now he's just going to run straight through all of us, isn't he? Why did our defender move the wrong side of the player? For seemingly no reason. This is the stuff that infuriates me. It just... <sighs> Watch this. When he plays the ball... Ah, uh, to be fair, it's just a really good ball through the channel. It looks worse in 2D, that one. It's just an excellent ball in behind, and now we're 2-0 down. Oh, dear. Best thing we can do, I think, is get Griffiths off, get Hermanson on, and play a much higher line, because, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Coming from 2-0 down is going to be a bit much, I'd say. Troffin! Oh, that was a decent opportunity for Troffin there, actually. Better. I mean, if he scores again today, I might start to get some hope for the lad. He's gone past the defender. Good God. Now what's he going to do? He's gone past another one. Surely not. He's going to shoot aimlessly. Oh, okay. Because on the plus side, there's been no highlights. Um, nothing has happened at all in this second half. That's not a bad ball, actually, for Ron Coates. Go on, lad. Use some of that 16 dribbling. Slip it across for uh, for, for Troffin. Oh, good stop. Um, He needs to be putting these away. Like, it, it just feels like they never, ever go in. Well, we're going to lose. We knew that kind of anyway. Um, 
It's just not been the best performance overall. Still created some opportunities, couldn't put them in the back of the net. Uh, Will Hughes and Rafael Leal. Like, you're not going to win every game. I think it's just frustrating to see the quality change so much and how one game we look like we can actually do something and then the next game you just look a bit ugh, lifeless but that's how things go still we're doing very very well in the league frankly and so i shouldn't really be complaining too much should i and obviously burnley lose again uh, no surprises there so as things stand with 10 matches to go we are 10 points clear we're not safe by any stretch of the imagination but i think we are right on the cusp of potentially being safe and look at the form lately it's actually been reasonably solid i've got to say so next episode oh wow look at this um Screw it. We'll come back and we'll do Southampton and West Ham off camera. And then we'll come back and do two important ones against Bournemouth and then Newcastle. That could be massive. I think if we avoid defeat at St. James's Park, then we're definitely going to stay up. But that's going to be really tough. And we'll have to sort of work out a plan for that game. I know we're taking it a bit slow at the moment, but because there's less games, it doesn't really seem like that. Plus, with the stress of how this week's gone, um, I kind of need those little bit of a break. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, and mainly for the 4-0 victory over Brighton, drop a like on the video. That would be tremendous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Um, hold your guys. Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.